Today I'm going to look at the URI storage extension for ERC721. I'm currently on the Open Zeppelin docs on version 4.x. We can see that it says it's storage-based token URI management, and it exposes three functions, token URI, set token URI, and burn. Token URI simply returns the token URI for a specific token ID, and set token URI lets you set the token URI for a specific token ID. And lastly, burning is just for burning tokens. As you may know, NFTs may be associated with external metadata, but where is this metadata stored and how is it associated with your NFT? Usually the metadata is not stored directly on chain, and typically there has to be a link somewhere pointing to that external metadata, and that link is the token URI. This extension provides storage for token URIs, which means that the URIs are stored on chain. That means that without this extension, the URIs are not going to be stored on chain. But if they're not stored on chain, then where are those URIs stored? So if your contract is not using the URI storage extension, that means that the token URIs are simply generated dynamically by concatenating the base URI and the token ID. As an example, let's say you're storing the metadata for your NFTs on your own website, like bobwebsite.com slash NFTs, and the token IDs are 1234. You can set up your folder structure such that the base URI plus the token ID will give you the path to the metadata for that token. For example, for token ID 1, the token URI could be bobwebsite.com slash NFTs slash 1. And for token ID 2, it could be bobwebsite.com slash NFTs slash 2. The benefit of this approach is that the only thing you need to store in your smart contract on chain is the base URI. That's because if someone wants to get the token URI, you're simply getting the token ID and adding that to the base URI. This means your storage is pretty efficient. The downside of this is that the token URI is coupled to the token ID because the token ID is now contained inside the URI. In addition, what if you're using something like IPFS, which has a content identifier to store your metadata? The content identifier is going to be a hash of the input data, and the hash is going to be some garbage output like this, which doesn't have any pattern like a sequentially increasing token ID. In that case, you cannot generate the token URI simply from concatenating the token ID and the base URI. For example, in one of my previous videos, I created NFTs of Pokemon, and I used IPFS to store the metadata associated with each NFT. So in this case, for example, Bulbasaur would have a link to the metadata at this IPFS URL. And you can see that this URL contains the hash from IPFS, which is random garbage, and the token ID is not present anywhere inside this URL. If we open up this URL, then we can see the metadata for the Pokemon. For example, here's that metadata. Now, just to clarify this point, it is possible to use IPFS without URI storage. However, this involves uploading a folder to IPFS, and then the folder is used as the base URI, and that way you can dynamically generate the token URIs by concatenating the IPFS base URI and the token ID. Now, let's look more closely at the Open Zeppelin code to see what I explained in the PowerPoint slide. The method token URI accepts the token ID and returns the URI for that token ID. On line 97, you can see that this method is checking if the base URI has been set. And if the base URI has been set, the token URI is going to be dynamically generated by combining the base URI and the token ID. So if the token ID is 1, for example, then the token URI is going to simply be the base URI slash 1. If the token ID is 2, then the URI is simply going to be the base URI slash 2. The base URI is set in this function, and the description says the same thing. If set, the resulting URI for each token will be the concatenation of the base URI and the token ID. Now let's look at how the storage URI extension changes the behavior of this token URI function. So this is the ERC721 URI storage contract, and this time the token URI method is different. In this implementation, the token URI is looked up from this token URI's mapping, and then we're checking if the base URL exists or not. If the base URI does not exist, that is if the length is equal to zero, then we're going to return the URI that was stored in that token URI's function that we retrieved on line 23. If both the base URI and the token URI are set, then this implementation is going to concatenate them both and then return it. Now let's look at this token URI's mapping. It's a private mapping which maps from the ID of the token to the string which represents the token URI. The mapping is populated by calling the set token URI method, where you're basically taking the token ID and the token URI, and then you're just associating that token ID to the URI. 
So instead of dynamically generating the token URIs, in this case, we are passing in the full URI for the token ID. This requires more storage than the simpler impl implementation in erc 721soul but then this allows you to break that coupling between the token ID and the token URI. In my previous video on creating Pokemon NFTs, I used the URI storage extension to create token URIs for each Pokemon. The token URIs were based on IPFS content identifiers, so they were hashes. And in this smart contract, I'm calling the set token URI method. Each time that I'm minting this NFT, I'm incrementing the token ID. So the token IDs are increasing sequ sequentially. For example, one, two, three, four, five, six. However, the token ID is not used in the URI. Instead, I'm simply passing in that token ID and then I'm passing in the URI as well. So this set token URI is going to associate that token URI with this token ID. I'm not going to run this code in this video because I already have a video about that. So I'll link that at the end of this video and you can definitely check that out to see how it works in practice. If you have any questions about how to use this extension or on setting metadata URIs for your NFTs, please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to respond. If you learned something, please give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.